who are God and God alone because of you my cry
throne of grace. The great, great straight from the throne of heaven, God. The word is too set on high, God. Let it from us angels minister this word, Lord God. Oh, let them not flesh be seen, but let Christ be magnified. In me, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Get your glory. Oh, God, and let's honor the Lord. Let's your people, God. Help your people, Father God. To receive this flat word on us. Let's give them God. That they may learn thereof and grow thereby in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I have a case that I have to share with the people of God of today. It's not a happy shout preached message. I know the last message God would allow me to preach, he only let me to teach. And this is another teach or talk message, amen, in its entirety. But I'm going to go with, come follow me. Some scriptures you may not be able to turn, but if you just listen and maybe write them down, however, or get the video. Amen. Amen. And then I'm going to show for you at the end of the message, the presentation. That's why I brought my pad so that you can hear what the Lord gave me, amen, and his insight from this message on today. So we'll be all hopping and hollering on today, amen. But in the book of Genesis, first of all, I want to say, we love you, Dr. Dixon. Yes. You are a pastor, of course, you're my mom, but I thank you, God amen, you. for carrying on another annual event of the Prayer Summit yeah, this good. year, 22. Yeah, yeah. Amen, you've been having for as long as I can remember. Amen, and every year, every round goes higher and higher, and right. deep goes amen. deeper and deeper. Right. Amen. amen, and God, amen, and God just poured out of his spirit heavenly. Yeah. Amen. But then since the time of Corona virus, you told us that we're not going to call for these speakers from anywhere, but rather you said we're going to do just in-house prayer and praise. That's right. And if we go outside of the immediate house, we pull over from our Bible college account, and saints from the Bible college account also came to do prayer and yeah. praise. So we thank God for what he's done. Let's give God the praise for all that he has done. He does triumphantly. How to give God the great praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's giving God a petty cat. Let's give God some real praise. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. He deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As a prophet, as a in my seed, I have a word that I have to bring forth. It's an old word he gave me, and he brought it back up around again, and he did some additions and takeaways and additions and on this word. So it's hell is for real. All right. yes, it is. Yes, amen. It is. Hell is real. A lot of people are saying, amen, there's tissue around the, the outside of the church. Anybody need some tissue? Amen. And uh, many people think this hell right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't have a clue or inkling of what hell really is. Amen. So we're going to give some scriptorial insight, amen, on what hell is and why he preached more than anything. Jesus preached more than anything about hell than anything else in the word of God. Yes. He preached, of course, about heaven. Heaven is light. Amen. The kingdom of God is light. But he also said, hell is. And he didn't say what it's like. He said, hell is. So let's go up to Genesis, the second chapter, beginning at the seven verse, two and seven. Oh, okay. And I have five points. First point, existing eternally in hell or heaven. And then the second point will be determine your destiny. God wants to determine where we're going to be before we get there. Yes. Make up our mind now. And then the third point is hell was created for Satan and his demons or minions. That gives you a hint why they choose a cartoon called minions. Well, they're actually demons. Amen. <laughs> he said he, hell was created for Satan and his demons or heaven that went with him, which is we know a third of heaven went, fell out of heaven, Lucifer, amen, went with him. 
Amen. And number four, sinners have a paycheck coming, and it's called hell. And number five, rejection of Christ is automatically hell. We don't want nobody to reject Christ yeah, at yeah. any time or fashion. Amen. So let's go to the word. Let's get down to it, two and seven. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, Amen. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breath, and excuse me, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. Man, from that point on, became eternal. Amen. Amen. You mean what? We're going to live forever? Well, yeah. Not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. See, your soul that you cannot see, God sees. And that part of man is eternal. Amen. We may not live it in this world, but in the world to come. And that either we're going to go to heaven mm -hmm. or we're going to be in hell. It's up for you to choose. Right. Amen. Amen. God gave us the ability, innate ability to choose who we will serve, who, what God we will serve, and what um, home should be our eternal abode. Yes. It's on to us to choose ye this day. Amen. It's been recorded many times in the scripture. Joshua, choose ye this day. Moses, choose this day. Yes. Amen. I believe in Sunday school, you talked about it today. Choose ye this day. Amen. Whom we will serve. Thank you, Dr. Nolan, for that. Amen. And so we go over and he talks about when he breathed into us, that's when the clock started ticking. Oh, yeah. Amen. And then in the book of Matthew 10. I'm going to go over to the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. We want to just give some insight because a lot of people that you talk to, they show Kirk Cameron and, and our brother Croft. Uh, I can't remember his other name, the other brother that um, showed with him. And they would talk about um, questions of pertaining to the end time. Do you believe the rapture? Do you believe in uh, here and now? And some people are again also say, well, this is now. This is hell. This is heaven. No, no, sorry. You can believe it all you want, but it's not. Amen. Right. No matter how far good it is or no matter how far bad it is. Amen. So let's just let the word speak. Amen. 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 28 says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. And then Matthew 10 and 28 says, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. Now, you know, at this point in time, I'm like, Lord, you sure may teach that right now? He said, yes, <laughs> emphatically, yes. And at first I got another word, but the Lord said, no, this has to be taught now. Because we're living at the time where God is shifting time. Right. He's taking home. He's, oh, shout out. He's taking home those who are ready. Oh, 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 shout for the call. Hallelujah. It's called the clarion call. Hallelujah. It's a certain sound. He's taking those who are ready. And, and so when the, your time comes, you got to choose wisely. Yeah. And it's not a matter of, of like on a test, you choose the answer A, B, C, multiple choice, or or, 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 or a long essay question. No, it's through the life we live. That's right. It's through the life we live. And so I'm going to go over to the book of Hebrews 9. Amen. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. Okay. And if somebody get it there before me, 9. If you got a King James, that'd be even better. Amen. Hebrews 9 and 27. Hallelujah. If you have it, you can read this. Yes. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, yes. but after this, the judgment. Amen. After death, the judgment. And that can of soul heed a warning. Yes. For his life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to see the judgment unprepared to me thy God. That's an old hymn. But the point is, we don't want to seek judgment when we're not ready. Amen. And it says, for it is appointed unto men. No, no, we all have an appointment, one appointment, that we cannot escape. Amen. Due to my work time and efforts that I have to pull in as far as nine to five, 
I can choose which appointments I can and cannot take off for. But this appointment can nobody choose. It's whenever God says, okay, it's your appointment. It's your appointment. It's your appointment. I think there's a Christian movie called The Appointment. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has seen it, isn't it? The Appointment. And a woman that was scheduled, I don't have time to go into that portrayal of that movie right now. I gotta teach the word, but you can look it up. The appointment. Amen. That's Hebrew. Let's go over to Matthew 7. Amen. And Matthew, thank God for getting over a cold. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Matthew 7 and 14. Mm -hmm. If you have that also, can you read someone? 7 and 14. Because straight is the gate, mm -hmm. and narrow is the way, which mm -hmm. leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh -huh. Let me go over that again. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. It says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way by which leadeth unto life. Amen. And few that be that find it. So the world's way, let you the Bible let you know, is wide. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Yeah. Amen. You can do gambling if that's your pleasure. You can do uh, uh, hop, whole hopping if that's your pleasure. Uh, 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 lucky strikes <laughs> if that's your pleasure. Amen. Amen. Whatever you choose, uh, uh, the Bible has a lot of deals that you can take, a lot of deals, drinking, toasting, whatever. But if you want to live holy, yeah. amen, it says, but because he says straight is the gate. Straight. That means we don't have no room for liars. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have no room for backsliders. Mm -hmm. It says, for narrow is the way narrow which leadeth unto life, yeah. not unto death. So let you know that the way to hell is the way to death. But the, because that's talking about the eternal death. But life in God is talking about the eternal life. That's and right. few there be that find it. Yes, if you do a mass census and try to find out who's going to heaven and who's all going to hell, uh, scripture lets you know that it's going to be many more in hell than there's going to be in heaven. Even though the Bible also portrays that it's going to be a number in heaven so great that no man can number it. Hallelujah. We're going to go over that today as well. Let's go over to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. Daniel 12. Amen. And verses 2 through 3. 12, 2 through 3. And it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And so no matter, make up what you make up your mind where you're going, it talks about that sleep. It yes. says many shall sleep in the dust, but there be many that shall rise and, and they shall sleep and they go, they should rise to everlasting life. Yes. In other words, it's still your choice. Amen. God has given the scriptures. And then he says, and, and they that be wise shall shine at the brightness. Yes, Things that have a saying about the saints. You know, there's a glow around you. <laughs> I see a, some people say there's a glory cloud over you. <laughs> Amen. They were seeing the Shekinah glory of God that he puts on his people. That's the, that's the glory cloud. That's the joy of the Lord. And it's even it emanating even around your whole circumference because it's the glory of God. Some people say that they see even angels. Yeah. Amen. Around you. Even Dr. Nixon. Yeah. Remember that back in the day? And you don't have to hear the saints say, oh, you just shining like a new pen. You just shining. That's the glory of God. Yeah. That's from living holy. Come on, somebody. That's from going through. That's from suffering. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Everybody don't have those glows like we used to. Come on. Yeah. And then we, and if you don't have it, say, Lord, give me the glow. Amen. Uh, yeah. Now be careful what you ask for. Because yeah. <laughs> like I said, a lot of that came from going through. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord. Lord. Amen. We were anointed. It might have been because we anointed our head with oil while we were fasting. <laughs> Amen. And then 5 and 28. Amen. And can we go here in John 5 and 28? We're going into the second point to determine your destiny. Now is the day we ought to determine our destiny. He said in John uh, 5 and 28, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves 
shall hear his voice. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice. So that means they're going to be dead and door not sleep. But they want to hear the voice of God. He's going to say, arise. Amen. And when he says that, they're going to give up the ghost. They're going to go up to heaven. Hallelujah. Now, when they go up to heaven, he says, he says here in the 28th verse, he says that marvel not for the hour is coming and in which they shall, the grave shall hear his voice. In other words, he said, okay, 29 is where I want to go. And shall come forth, they shall come forth before him, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. Oh my God, I remember years ago there was a movie called Queen of the Damned. You don't want to rise up Queen of the Damned, or no much how good they painted her up in that picture. Amen. You don't want to look like a Leia in that movie. Amen. Because God, if she can save, come on. There's only one place where she can go. Amen. But in God, we want to be holy. We want to to rise up to holiness and righteousness. Amen. And the Lord. Amen. So going forward, hallelujah. We're going to look at Ezekiel. There's a righteousness and reward. There's even a reward for righteous living. Amen. We want the war that brings righteousness. Amen. Or comes to us because of our righteous living. Yeah. Amen. Not for living a cantankerous type of lifestyle. Amen. Ezekiel 18 and 4 reads, Behold, all souls are mine, and the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sitteth, it shall die. So you belong to God, your son, your children, they belong to God. But the soul that sinned, it shall die. And then God said, the all souls are mine from the get-go. He said, but from which way to go from the time they're born, it's up to them. Yes, yes. I mean, they start off in my good standing, but then after that, they choose. Amen. They give them the wrong crowd. They choose what school they're going to go to. They choose who they're going to marry. They choose what uh, place they're going to live. Come on, they choose what car to drive, what college to attend. But then comes the ultimate choice. For God I live, for God I die. Which God are you going to choose? Yes, yes. Oh, no, oh, oh, I believe, I believe over in Chicago, they chose Bethlehem. Mm. Come on, at the state capital. That's right, they chose Bethlehem. If you don't know what that word is, look it up. Oh, Amen. That's a God. demonic statue of the devil erected in Chicago's capital. Yeah. It's not a wonder why they got too much tremendous snow right now. Come on. We got to choose who we're going to serve. Come on, somebody. We got to choose. And then over in the book of Revelations, hallelujah. Well, they say catching hell. Okay, they've been catching snow over there. Amen. In Revelation 20. Amen. 20. And we're going to go from 10 on to 15. Amen. In Revelation 20, verse 10 through 15. It says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Let me read that again. It says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the bees and the false prophet are and shall be trans, or shall be tormented, pardon me, shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the, and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And it says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. We know those who died during the time of Moses' exodus were part of that dead. The Titanic caught some dead down there. Come on, somebody. Amen. It says, and, and, and it says in 13 it says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And the death and hell, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Mm-hmm. 15 uh, says, and whosoever was not found, excuse me, who was not ever found, amen, written. In the book of life was cast, my God, into the lake of fire. Now you said the lake of fire, that sounds like something geographical. That sounds like something that you can physically find. Somebody believe me? Is it a location? Is it a place that can be found? It sure is. 
We'll talk about that at the end. Amen. So let's go on. It says, so Matthew, let's go to Matthew 25, 41. And in Matthew 25, 41, all this is given reference to and build it up to a point that I'm trying to lead you to. And then about, and then we got to choose who we're going to, where we're going to spend eternity. Mm -hmm. And then 25 and 41 reads, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Amen. And it reads in this, and it says, amen. Then shall he say unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Ooh. You know, Jesus didn't mix words. Amen? Amen. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. Amen. For those that want to be saved, he let them know, okay, come on the right hand. There's pleasure for everyone. But on the left side, amen, were the tears. And he made a way for them, amen, to be burnt up. Amen. So let's go over to, uh, we were talking about, Third point, which was hell, was created for Satan and his demons. In other words, hell was not made for mankind. The natural body of man cannot exist or live even one second in hell. One second in hell is uh, eternal punishment. Yes, yes. Enough. Oh, my God, the fire that burns, that burns forever, the warm that dies not. Amen. Glory to God. It talks about the different torments of hell. And then I'm going to go over to the fourth point. Sinners have a paycheck coming, and it's called hell. If you go with me, go with me to Matthew 16 and 26. Matthew 16 and 26 reads. He says, For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in his in the, in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward everyone according to his works. Amen. God said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Praise God. And so we know that there is a, nothing that you can pay for. Yeah. For your soul, if you had all the money in the world. What's the guy that owns uh, uh, Amazon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have enough money to buy his soul. Oh, to save the soul? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody I don't know. And they said there's a prince out of America owns, he's one of the richest men in the world. Not enough money to even save his own soul. Yeah. Or to exchange for his soul. It's nothing that you can do. Yeah. Amen. And then we're talking about over in the, let's go to Numbers, the 16th chapter. Also, amen. The book of Numbers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. We're talking about amen, how to save your soul, amen, and not go the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Number 16. Hallelujah. Amen. 16. Because I don't want all my family and friends to make it in. I don't want none of them to go to hell. Amen. You don't want your worst enemy. Amen. That's a nightmare for anybody. You don't want nobody to go there. Amen. Number 16 and 16 reads. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is a, a portrayal of, of, well, I'll just read it, concerning Moses. And y'all know the story of Dathan and how he was judging Moses. Mm -hmm. Amen. At 16 and 16, we say, Moses said unto Korah, be thou, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they, an errand tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Um, did God mix words? He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. He said, Separate them from you. He said, That I may consume them in a moment. My Lord. Uh, okay, we're going to go on and find out why, for those that don't know the story. It said, and they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, so one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And they're 
trying to blame it all on just David. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation. Now here's the mercy right here. Saying, Get you up and about from about the tabernacle of Korah and Dathan and Abraham. Not Abraham, a B Ram. And Moses rose up and went to unto Dathan and Abraham. And the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abraham, on every side. And Dathan and Abraham came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know. Now they're separated at this time. Here go God. He said, and Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. So he said, Y'all talking about me saying I'm not a prophet? Watch what happens. Uh, this is what's going to happen. He prophesied it before it happens. He said, This is what thus and thus is going to happen. He said, but if I'm not a true prophet of God, then it's not going to happen. So now, this is here. He said, but if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all the that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Oh, oh that's dangerous. And it came to pass, as ye had made an end of speaking all these words, that the grave clay asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertain unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So this is just one example. The Lord is not plain. No, he's not. He's on his way back. Oh, my God. I can't remember. Back in 07, I had a message pinned up on that wall, kind of like where that plaque is. Uh, where it has 2 Timothy 2.15, and it was a prophecy that I saw about, uh, not prophecy, but a, for, for, it was the um, actual events of the, of the earth opening up when those sinkholes started. Yeah. And I had that Pope Bruce, you remember? It was posted right on that wall. And people walk by Sunday after Sunday like, yeah, hey, Sarah, just post her stuff. Until it started happening in America. Yeah. That was over in Mexico at the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's so coming down on locusts on the east side, big old, uh, Excalibur uh, Cadillac was in the uh, uh, ground, and then a sinkhole opened up. But my God, God could do it right here. It could be downtown. It could be right here. Amen. And God showed me a vision and a dream of some folk that was going to fall into that sinkhole or a sinkhole period. Amen. That was from the church back then. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not going to give no names. Amen. This is televised. Amen. I pray for everyone. Amen. But I know when they walk in disobedience, God's word is true. Yeah. Yeah. God's word is true. Amen. So that was what happened in, in Numbers. Amen. Let's go on talking about, amen, the paycheck. Amen. That if the sinners have a paycheck, we know we get a paycheck from the Lord, but a lot of people don't know that hell has a paycheck. Let's go to the book of Mark. Amen. And you know, they looked at Moses because he was a meek man. Meek men don't know how to defend themselves, but God defends and fights for those. Amen. 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 I remember my little brother was preaching in high, I mean, in middle school, and they said, that, oh, the little preacher. He said, little preacher, he may not be defending himself, but I got his back. You need bragging or no? That's right. That's right. <laughs> he started cussing that brother out for him. Because he couldn't fight for himself. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go to, amen, Mark 9 and 44 through 48. Amen. It says, where? Their warm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. If it is better for thee to enter heart into life than having two feet to be cast into hell.
hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Cover us, cover us, Lord. Let not any of us go to hell, I pray, Father. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Verse 48 says, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. No water, not even a drop of water can be seen in hell. Nothing to drink there. No lemonade, no Kool-Aid, no nothing. And then the Bible talks about there's a, a place of falling. There's a place of eternal darkness. There's a place of, of where everybody's imagines is only evil, meaning they hurt one another even. And then there's a part of hell where the worm dieth not, and it's not just the big worms, but they got things called maggots. And you see that on meat sometimes. That's yeah. just oil. Oh, yeah. My God. And that's part of it. Let's go to Matthew 13. For those of you that can turn, Matthew 13 and 50 through 51. Amen. And it says here, uh, talking about the rewards of hell or the paycheck, it says, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. And, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. And there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Amen. So there's a furnace that is always reheated. It's never turned off. Uh, the devil pays his heating bill. <laughs> And, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be well in the national teeth. I'm not trying to be funny. And Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. So Jesus said, Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the words that's coming out of my mouth? Hell is real. Yes, yes it is. He tell them this because he didn't want nobody to go there. Jesus saw what was going to happen because he's God. Yeah. He's God all by himself, so he's trying to say, let me warn them, let me warn my people before their time comes. Right. And we know a lot of people did not believe him and did not want to receive it. And so let me paint you a little picture. He said there's a furnace of fire, there's wailing, which is crying and deep pain, there's gnashing of teeth, where they grind their teeth out of anger, they just grinding their teeth. You see the teeth moving their teeth, so they just, <laughs> like a raving mad. A maniac of a dog is just angry because they're there. Not repentant, but angry. Yeah. My God, you think you'd be repentant, but they were not repentant, repentant. Oh, so then we talk about the rejection of Christ. This is the last point, Dr. Nixon. Yeah. Amen. I'm shorting it up so I can go into the dramatization. He said the rejection of Christ found in Luke 16 and 19. Luke, the 16th chapter. Verse 19. All right. So look at 16. Oh, great. Right. Thank you, God. In the 19th verse, thank you. It says, There was a rich man, a certain rich man, rather, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared, he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Y'all know the story. Oh, man. And there, and, and which was laid at his gate full of sores, yes. and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores, mm. and it became, and it came to pass that the beggar died, yes. and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Mm. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham far off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Mm. And besides all this, between us, you, between us and you, there is a great gulf fence, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us yes. that would come from hence. And he said from thence, and then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that may, he may testify unto, 
lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And just like it is now, is how it was back then. Yeah. And he, he told him, said, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one of but if one went unto them from the dead, they will they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. In other words, nothing will persuade them. They don't, if, in other words, it's up to the heart of a man to choose. Yeah. He said they would not choose and they meant to, to repent. He says, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. If you saw a spirit from the dead right now, would you repent if you were a sinner? Many people say they would not. Some say they would, but they just lie. You never know at that point what you would do. And so then going on, it says that Dives, a rich man, he, he led a very scrumptious, he ate scrumptiously every day. He, he wore the best clothes. He had the best parties. He drove the nice, best, uh, whatever they had for vehicles back then. And, the ho biggest houses, yes. And so now he's in hell. Mm -hmm. And now Lazarus is riding high in the hog. Come on, so, or high in Jesus. That ain't no hog in heaven. Amen. Praise God. And so we know how. Praise God. Glory to God. We know. I want to go forth. Praise God. In this, in this, I'm almost there. We're in Luke, I want to go further. Matt, in Mark 16 and 16, we're almost done. Almost there. Mark 16 and 16. I'm going to get to my major point. That's what I'm trying to conclude here. And then bring it on home. As they say 16 and 16. Okay. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So if a person does not believe in Christ, they automatically are rejecting Christ. Yes. If you ask them to, if you want to believe in Jesus, no, I don't believe in Jesus. I believe I'm an anti-Christ. Uh, uh, no, I'm not anti-Christ. I'm an atheist or agnostic. One don't believe in Christ. One don't believe in the idea of religion. Uh, there, there, there's no religion. There's just, well, your fact that you believe in no religion that you have a religion of. There's no religion. So how can you say you don't believe? Okay, so let's go over to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Over in the book of Acts. Glory. Hallelujah. Acts 12 and 21. Amen. Acts 12 and 21 says, And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. Okay? And, and I'm bringing up Herod for a reason. We're going to conclude with this in a minute. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. Now, there's another story. Um, amen. I, I searched for it in the Bible, couldn't find it, but it's recorded in history. You got to look in Roman history between the time of 305 to 331 BC. And it's recorded, his name is Galerius. Galerius, you can't turn to your Bible for this, was a man that was an emperor, again, of, of Rome, and he had more pride than what you heard me read about Herod in the book of Acts, okay? And so it says what happened to him, that he had so much pride that the Bible says that he had a lot of things going on in his body and the worms that came out of his body pushed out from his loins. It pushed, you know, he had worms that came, ate him from the inside out. Mm -hmm. the, a pack of them just pushed out. Mm. You know, and, and the moment it pushed out, it just covered his whole body and you knew he was gone. He became a skeleton instantly like that. That was called immediate judgment. Immediate, immediate judgment. judgment. He went right straight from earth where he was everybody was like, Yes! Oh, what a God! Yes! To right in hell. Mm. Mm. That's saying, God, don't play. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so we're going on. These are two accounts of people, and then the God resisted pride. Yes. Pride is different from all the other sins because pride is a spirit. Right. It's not a work of the flesh. So that's why God judges pride more harsher than he judges flesh. There is a difference between flesh and pride is pride resists God. Yeah, it was pride in Lucifer that said, I will accept, accept my throne above the most high. And 
then after he set his throne above the most high, he said, I will take off God. Uh oh, you can't even finish your sins. You're out of here. <laughs> yeah. Can't even finish your sins. That's because God is almighty. He's Yahweh. He's he, he does, He's God all by himself. Amen? Amen. And so we know, amen, that when he set, when he, when he cast Lucifer out, a third of the heavenly angels went with him. Yes. Amen. And hence, we got the word demons. Okay? And so now, where are those demons? They're left in chains until the time of torment. Okay, so now let's go forward. There will not be any friends in hell. Mm -mm. You won't be having any family fun, no parties. No, 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 no. Nothing but stuff, sad times like remorse forever. Mm -hmm. Remorse forever. Remorse forever. Whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book was cast into outer, outer darkness. Amen. Cast into eternal torment forever. Some people are now afraid to say or prove that they love Jesus. If a person is afraid to say, I believe in Jesus, that means that they're ashamed of Jesus. If, any, if anybody you find that's ashamed of Jesus, that means they'll be afraid, that means Jesus will be ashamed to own you up before the heavenly uh, the angels in, in heaven. That's right. He would say, depart from me, you work of iniquity, I know you not. No. And then, and he would tell you to depart into a hell uh, that's made for the devil and his angels. Amen. God did not make hell for mankind, but for the devil and his angels. That's right. Amen. And then going on, God has a plan for mankind. Now here's the good news. Let's go over to the book of Revelations. Amen. Revelation 7, 9 through 17. And it reads, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by, I'm, I'm in Revelation, I'm in Romans, I'm sorry, I know that didn't sound right. Oh, over in the book of Revelations, the ninth chapter. I'm still getting over this cold, I am so sorry guys. All right, nine, just this 24 hours of cold, okay? Nine, okay, here we go, seven and nine. Amen. 79 says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and all the eld about the elders. And the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which come, which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some saints left that's going to go through. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Look, I know we're not appointed unto wrath. There's going to be some that's going to be left here. Woo! Come on, somebody. It says, therefore, amen, and, 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 and I, come on, we'll bring that up later. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them yeah. unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away wipe all away. tears yeah. from their eyes. Yeah. Amen. So what have you been going through? God's going to pay you. He's going to pay you back. It's going to be worth it all. Once yeah. you make it through the pearly gates of heaven, come on, somebody. Yeah. Come Lord. 
And in 22, 8 through 13, it says, this is the last verse of scripture. He says, then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not ready. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he said, and he was speechless. Then said the king unto the servant, Bind him and foot, bind him hand and foot, and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be wiping or weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Can't clap your hands, give Jesus a praise. Clap your hands, give Jesus a praise. Come on, lift your voice and give Jesus a praise. He's worthy to be praised. Are you ready to be called? Are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready for hell? You gotta make up your mind. For God, I need her. For God, I need her. Will it be God or the devil? Who are you going to serve? Come on, somebody. Bless your name, Jesus. I just want to play this for you right now. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to I just want to be on time for Dr. Six and what we to do. Amen. And I just want to play this for your hearing right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is kind of loud. Let's see if you can hear this. Okay, hold on. Let me so so let's begin the video. Okay, here we in go. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the deepest hole on Earth. The this hole is a true hole. story. It is also known as the well to hell because locals in the area say that the hole is so deep that you can hear the screams of people being tortured in hell. In this video, I will also show you a recording of these screams, but first, let me tell you about its history. It is the result of a scientific drilling project in Russia on Kola Peninsula. Yeah. They all hope to find out what was going on at such great depths, and most importantly, just find out if they could do it. Drilling began on the 24th of May 1970. By 1979, the project had broken all other world records. Over two decades, they managed to dig more than 12 kilometers down into the earth. The Kola Superdeep Borehole is 23 centimeters in diameter and its metal lid is welded. During the hiatus, the scientists and politicians from around the world made visits to the site. However, in 1992, they had to stop drilling because the temperature was more than 260 degrees Celsius, which was far hotter than the scientists predicted it would be. Experts still need to figure out a way to overcome this temperature issue if they want to keep drilling and not destroy all of their equipment in the process. All this drilling wasn't for nothing, though, as some scientific discoveries were made. Locals in the area say the hole is so deep, you can hear the screams of people being tortured in hell, hence its nickname, the well to hell. Listen carefully to the recording of these voices coming from this hole. Can y'all hear? That's with noise on it. We're gonna remove the noise in a minute. Without the noise. Now, if you want me to send you a, a copy of that, I can. The point is this: is hell is for real. Mm -hmm. The scientists that were doing this experiment excavation, they did not expect mm -hmm. when they went over 2,000 feet on the ground that they were going to come up with such heat all around their vehicle. And as they were going deeper in the ground, not only did they the heat was unbearable, but then they began to hear. Oh, no, we're not hearing what we think we're hearing. Mm -hmm. We're hearing people down here screaming for their lives. 
and they couldn't see the people because it was so pitch dark, but they could feel the heat and they could hear the screaming of people actually screaming about, like they were in utter torment, utter, utter torment and horrific pain. So the question is to you, what's worth on earth having to inherit that? My Lord. There's nothing worth it. Not Amen. And what can a man exchange for his soul that's eternal? Yes. Amen. I came to you as much as I can from Genesis to Revelation, all that you can possibly learn. I couldn't preach it, I could teach it. What can you possibly inherit? Or what's more worth having that you can think that the most beautiful, wonderful thing on this earth is worth having? Like somebody might say, oh, that pink diamond on the Titanic, the blue diamond, wherever it is, on the Titanic, whatever. There's nothing on this world that's worth having on this world that it be exchanged for your soul. Amen. Nothing. Not, nothing. A, not even a relationship. Not a job. Not a car. Not a house. Nothing. Not in this world. Nothing. nothing. You know, I, I, I've ended it now. Let's do your word, Father. We thank you for this thy word of today. Lord, I, I faithfully did what you asked me to do, bring what you gave me for your people. They can take it, chew it, spit it up, re-chew it if they want, and keep it or reject it. I pray that rejection is not the answer, Lord, that they may choose. But Lord, however, and I know I had a little phlegm, but Lord, I ask you to throw away the, the bones and take the meat of your word. Lord, let, let the word nourish them, oh God. Yeah. Let them know this door is not the door to go through, which is the door of hell. But let them choose the door of heaven. Father God, we don't know what day will be our last day on this earth. We know the last time you had me to speak, Lord, you spoke on Gog and Magog and Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the, the scientific experiment, guess where it was? Over by Russia, Siberia. Yeah. And they were Russian scientists. It's kind of funny. That hell was right over where they're at right now. Yeah. Let you know that that's a portal. Portal. portal to hell. That's why I'm not surprised that Putin is doing what he's doing. So Lord, again, we come to you, Father. We ask you for your mercy, your grace, ask for your angelic yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, orchestration in this whole thing of the end of the world. Get us ready, God. Get your saints ready. Let us be on with one accord with your mission, your vision. Lord, Lord, Lord God, Lord. that you've given Dr. Dixon as, our, as we serve under her. Lord, that you give us what to do, Father God, as we do our daily soul winning. God, as we share the gospel, as we pray. Lord, you've given each one of us a design uh, 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 prescription of how to win souls. You gave me a dream this week, how to win this next week. Oh, I'm so glad for that. Lord, I just pray to give all of us a description of, 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 of a prescription. Once again, to each soul for the hope that lies within us. Holy oh, God, let that the devil steal the word that you put within us, oh God. Oh God, rebuke every uh, onslaught of disease and, and, and illnesses, coronavirus, anything that's trying to get in our way. Find every ailment. Oh God, and double fold, cover, cover your fivefold ministry. Yes, yes, yes. Now usher out and, and, and bring out the word. Cover your fivefold ministers, Lord. That the devil's trying to stop them, oh God, and temporary put them on lockdown so they won't bring out the word. We bind the devil right now. Right. And all is in sin and silence in the name of Jesus. And we speak the blood of Jesus blood over this week. Cover this week, God. Cover each and every vessel on the way home from church today. I pray that you give us the spirit of victory all week long. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthen us. And we can live this salvation walk. We can do all things through Christ. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on and give our praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going where Jesus is. Hallelujah. I didn't know nobody even answer that. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going with the Lord. I'm going with the Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. See, you know what? When people say they go on a vacation, they make a reservation. They send in their credit card information. If they're going to need a car, they make sure that they have it. 
and so many people in these days and these hours, they, they make up their minds that they're just really not, well, I'm going to just do church. And I'm just going to assume that I'm going to make it. But unless you made Jesus the Lord of your life, and somebody listening right now, you may say, well, Dr. Dixon and I go to a church. I sing in the choir. And I serve as best I can. But if your soul will be required of you tonight, if your soul would be required of you tonight, would you be able to make it in? So these messages are warning. Warning coming for destruction. Yes, Lord. And oftentimes people don't want to hear messages like this. Old folks say they tight as tight, but it's right. And like I said before, I, I'm not going to stand before God with blood on my hands because I didn't tell the truth. Sometimes people are so worried about friendship. Yes, Lord. They are. Men pleasers. Yes, they are. But when you truly want to please God, Jesus said it this way, why callest me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I ask? Yes. So today, we're asking, Lord, what would you have us to do? Yes. Let's pray. Yes, Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for obedient spirit. We pray that, Lord God, our lives be yes. Lord, an honor to you as we worship you in spirit and truth. Now, Lord, let your glory be revealed, let your will be done. And help us to say, Lord, whatever your will is, I surrender. And I will serve you keeping your word and that you may be glorified. Thank you for it, Lord. In my time on this earth, let me glorify you in Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. All right, we're going to give the best of Lord. Come on over, Lord. You can get your offerings out. Thank you, Jesus. God be the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God bless you all.